is uh, not going well. Uh, again? <laughs> well, there has been some news about DedSec, the resistance and or terrorist organization. Delete according to preference. Not preference, sorry. Delete according to whether or not you work for the government, sirs. Bloom the galleys or Alpha. <laughs> according to a serve official, DedSec is no longer a threat. Is a real threat waggling that knife at me trying to knock me out. They call a scalpel and an anesthetic, Gladys. Anyway, if Sir's officials say DedSec is dead and buried, I guess we have to assume that DedSec's never been stronger. But I do worry, Alice. I mean, sometimes I think, is there any hope? Do you, do you still have hope? I don't think I'm allowed to have hope. We're living in this self selected, algorithmically designated information equivalent of a propaganda state. And uh, every resistance that I've ever seen is weaker than the British pound. I feel like ho hope is an expensive thing to buy these days. Right. I mean, is it all, is it all totally pointless? I mean, it can feel pointless. And again, I've spent almost all of my life doing pointless things like watching a sport, reducing thinking about sport, thinking about watching sport, learning French and hoping for a better future. All completely pointless. But yeah, I've done them, so we might as well carry on. Is there a light at the end of the tunnel? Uh, yes, I think there is. Unfortunately, what is that light? Is it an oncoming train? Well, no, it couldn't be. Obviously, the train would be late or cancelled. Is the light at the end of the tunnel a burning effigy of the concept of hope? Quite possibly. Is it the soul of Sky Larson imploding into its own vacuum? Well, that may well be that. <laughs> is it the ego of Nigel Cass that is now so big that it's sucked all the light in the universe into itself? I think that it is most, most likely. Is that, but... We'll never give up, bug fans. This resistance will never die. And one day, we will again be free. Free from these technological chains. Free to choose our own futures. Free to live our own lives. Free to waste our time watching people bake cakes and dance badly again. Those were the days. Oh. Before we go, time for a quick bug off. I'm going to nominate this week Sky Larson here at the bug. We are all in favour of strong, powerful women. And in many ways, Sky is the ultimate feminist icon, proving that women can do just as abominably awful things to this planet as men. <laughs> uh, I mean, overall, Alex, I think, I think we're still ahead as men, but you lot are catching up. Fair play. Fair play to you. You are listening to The Bug. Welcome back to The Upload. Today, we're talking about cryptocurrency. Crypto now seems like it's been around forever, but it's really quite a new invention. Were you an early adopter? I was one of the first that was in this market. There seemed to be a new way of financial transactions, a new way of money. It's something that we could completely reinvent and change some of the legacy financial systems around the world and really give power back to the people. Yeah, it was a real shift in the way that the world works. And let's recap the basics. So central to cryptocurrency is the distributed ledger technology, the tech that keeps track of all transactions. And what this means is you can have a decentralized system without having to trust any one party, like old fashioned banks. One of the reasons why I got involved so early was that you could stay anonymous. Yeah, but you look like someone who wants to make a difference. Ah, so you're dead sec then. Good. I could use a hand with something. Perhaps. What's the situation? So I've got this mate. We used to go to protests and whatnot together. So last time, Albion gets cute. Cracks me mate's head in with their own sign. Then, fucks off with them in an ambulance. Well, we were told they'd die, but no one was allowed to see the body. Not friends, not family. How dreadful. It's fucking suspicious. But maybe it's nothing. But I gotta know one way or another. Find out what happened to my friend and I'll find a way to pay you back. Ooh, sounds like a tough situation. I'll do what I can. The friend's official record states he was taken to hospital before he died. I wager we'll find what we're looking for there. Paper notes, plastic notes. And now it's just all digital. There's nothing to hold on to. It was great just to be able to have a little bit of money to carry around with you. I think the turning point in the UK really came a few years ago when the pound dropped 10% over just one season. People living off grid started using crypto and just as everyone was losing faith in the pound, they were gaining it in cryptocurrency, which turned out to be much more stable, kind of the opposite to what people thought in the beginning. 
And then, of course, there was the recession. It didn't take long for startups to see an opportunity in this new way of doing finance. A lot of traditional money was converted to crypto and it really shook up the financial sector. Can you remember when they first introduced crypto cash points? That was really sneaky. It was a classic startup behavior. They just installed them everywhere. No consultation with the government, no approval or anything. But people immediately started to use them. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of how Bloom put out the optic they just made it free and flooded the streets with these devices option of tech people are just going to start using it no matter the cost parliament actually tried to put a stop to the cash points but people were using them so much already there was outrage i mean some parts of london were already using crypto as their primary currency by then and now apparently or at least in theory crypto is illegal yeah in may this year economists found that crypto was being traded more than the pound and banks were not happy they basically forced the government to ban cryptocurrency in a last-ditch effort to save the pound. But it's not like that's worked. People are still using crypto, and it's been pushed further, deeper underground. Things used to work fine with crypto, and it was just a peer-to-peer -peer sharing economy-style system. Now it's all on the dark web and wrapped up again in organized crime. Yeah, if you want to make something thrive on the black market, just make it illegal. Emergencies are never welcome, but what if, when you dial 999, no one answers the call? Operator shortages and unreliable automated systems have been blamed for a number of deaths this year alone. You're at the hospital where our prospect's friend died. We can get hold of his full patient record here. Okay. Located the CTOS hub. Well, our prospect should be pleased. Turns out his friend isn't dead. Or if he is, he didn't die here. What do you mean? There are no patient records on file, and GPS data shows the ambulance going dark before it reaches the hospital. The driver must have switched it off. I'm upgrading this from dodgy to fucking dodgy. Suppose I can look into it? You won't have to look very far. The driver is on site now.
sending you the data. Good. I'll do some fancy maths on it while you escape from this weirdly dangerous hospital. Mm. Bagley, what do we have? I've cross-referenced the driver's location history with the missing GPS data from her ambulance. Looks like she dumped her patient at an SIRS facility. Isn't that interesting? Deep state creeps like SIRS tend not to interrogate corpses. If our missing person is in their custody, he's probably still alive. Let's see what we can scrounge up. update to the CSA app, the government app that has brought the great British tradition of snitching on people you don't like back to the very heart of public life. All right, I'm here. So's our missing person. Seems this is where everyone on the SIRS naughty list winds up. Expect heavy security. Why the hell did I sign up for this?
the hell is going on over there? You're supposed to contain such fuck-ups. How can we have a drone collision in the middle of the city? You know, a person died, right? Hit by flying debris. How can we have press there prior to any cleanup team? Only shouldn't any such event ever happen, but even if it did, it must be contained. I have to send one of my teams now to clean the area, silence the press, and be on the lookout for over-talkative witnesses. All this effort is avoidable. That's why Cato exists. I don't want anything like this to happen, ever. That's if you value your job and your freedom, for all it matters. There he is. Get him out. Get him out of here. We've just hijacked a feed from an Albion prison flight. Seems these poor sods are being renditioned out of the country for extreme insubordination. Why? I know, right? Why not just fire them? All I can tell you is that these people are off to summer school in the Seychelles for re-education. This is Connor 12. George has full control of the plane. Connor 12, stand by. We're getting some weird readings with your onboard data. Understood. Pan pass, Delta 39 pass. There's somebody else in the system. Right, here we are. These prisoners were detained for attempting to reveal operations intelligence to external agents. Whistleblowers. Perhaps they even tried to contact DedSec. Luckily, you can reroute the plane. Good thinking, Bags. should be landing in a few hours. I contacted the local authorities who are less than pleased with Albion. Seems they think of human rights as rights and not legal obstacles. These Albion defectors will be welcome. Thank you, sweetie.
looks like you avoided them. We found your friend. They were being held captive by Sirs, but thanks to us, they're alive and safe. Jesus Christ, you're serious, aren't you? Oh my God, those fuckers! Thank you. Sincerely. How could I ever pay you back for this? Well, the best way to repay us would be to join us. Dead set could use you. Thought you'd never ask. Oh no, I can't afford it. Now they're all getting married in Brighton and I have to go to that alleged beach. It's made of rocks, Andy. Bags, what's up with her? Albion just placed her under severe data restriction. Why? Well, she's been looking into a couple of their field officers' dodgy side project. And you know how Albion feels about transparency. Well, they're obviously hiding something, aren't they? Let's see what. Right, here's the coordinates of the goons in question. See if you can't work out what they're up to. <laughs> now with crypto, all, all the romance is gone. Catching tales. I miss romance, Andy. I miss there being mystery in life and not just a, a hope that your new partner isn't good enough at hacking to find out all the information the government has on you. Bye for now, bug fans. Keep feeding the kidney resistance, and one day it will grow into a Tyrannosaurus Rex that will use the Cass family's tools. CTOS 3.0, the city operating system that's now powering all of London. For those of you who need reminding, as if anyone does at this point, CTOS was first used in Chicago in 2014 and then San Francisco in 2017 before coming here to London. And every time it's been rolled out, it's been pretty much an unmitigated disaster. For those of you who are listening who are lucky enough not to be here in London's chaotic scenes, it's worth remembering that the telecoms tower is now owned by Bloom. The tower looms over northwest London. It's always been a communications hub, acting as part of the UK's television and communications network. Although there's been some secrecy around its use, and now that Bloom owns it, it's only even more secret. Yeah, now everything that's part of Bloom's city surveillance operation is run through the telecoms tower. And I have to say, it looks completely ridiculous. It's got that silly crown thing at the top and all the blue light. What's that even about? What does it do? I don't see that there's any purpose to that at all. It's a blight on the skyline, if you ask me, and it's become the main point of control for millions of people. The system network and Bagley are both operated... Those are the two Albion creeps our prospect is looking into. You should see what sort of filthy data you can scrape off their optics. Bring bleach.
Sending you the data. I'm analyzing it now. It'll take some time, so you can go scan the other officer now if you want. Bagley, what do we have? Oh, I've just got the usual grim portrait of the human condition. These two grab undocumented Londoners off the street, spend a few days beating the absolute piss out of them for fun, and then ship them out of the country. Not even the pretense of due process. Good lord, you got all of that from their optic logs. Well, between their body cams and their message history, they've left quite the paper trail, almost as if they're not worried about being caught. Shall I send the details to our friend? Yes. Set up a meeting, won't you, Bags? Closest units proceed to alarm location. The technology was meant to make things better, but Bloom has made it so bad that it just makes London even more chaotic than it was before. I'm giving up on the cars. I'm only using the bikes, which are not self-driving at the moment, at least. And don't even get me started on the data. Everything that Bloom sees from your what? movements around the city and the self-driving cars is collected and feeds back into its big information control system. Oh, not you. to me, Tash, on Buccaneer, your source for what they don't need to know. This time, we're turning our focus back on the media to look at my former employer, the GEB. As we know, the broadcaster has been through a lot of changes since the Hassani government gave in to pressure from his corporate backers and privatised the corporation. Today, the GBB is a shadow of its former self. It's become a tool used by the government to circulate fake news and misinformation. So how did we get here? 
Where did it all go wrong? How can we tell when our national media has become state propaganda? Our experts speak on conditions of anonymity for their own safety. Here's disinformation and media expert Charles, who's seen free broadcasters built up by journalists and torn down by demagogues all over the world. So before the media fragmented, there was this voice of authority that was trusted and, you, and, and worthy of trust. Then what we ended up with is a really commercial model where whether you're or whether you're talking about a broadcaster, the most important thing was to keep you in that environment for the longest amount of time possible. Because that meant money in their pocket. And in order to do that, a couple of things happened. One was the use of manipulative techniques around behavioral economics, things that would just keep you scrolling or keep you listening or keep you looking for more information. The second is that that kind of environment favors sensationalism. And so you got more sensational headlines and more sensational stories, and it didn't matter whether they were true or not. It just kept people in, and it kept them in the loop. And so we ended up in a situation where nobody trusted anything, and nobody believed anything at all. And that is the perfect environment for an authoritarian voice to come in and say, no way, we are here. So the ground for this environment really got created when we had uh, suddenly authoritarian politicians everywhere. Anything that threatened them or they disagreed with, they would follow them. So, you're dead sec. Excellent. I prefer meeting face to face. Thank you for sending me the logs. I expected something awful, but this, it's positively monstrous. The public has to know about this, but I can't leak the story just yet. What do you mean? I got involved and began looking into these beasts because they snatched one of my friends. If they're still locked up when I publish this story, Albion will probably torture them or kill them. As it happens, we're rather practiced at rescuing people from Albion thugs. We'll handle it. Thank you very much. I never forget a favor. Help me and I'll help you however I can. I found the facility where our prospect's friend is being held. Forward me the coordinates. Britain, we had perhaps more diverse voices in the media, but now with the GBB, uh, you're really only seeing one brand of, of news, and therefore only getting one truth. So people end up with uh, a very biased and controlled idea of the reality and, and the world that we're actually living in. Of course, many concerns and many problems, but in a way there were some positive things that like not all information was coming from one place, and, and so you, you'd have kind of far-right media outlets developing and then left-wing media outlets developing to combat those and, and kind of challenge the, the mainstream newspapers, TV stations, radios, and make sure people were, were questioning the, the, the validity and, and truth of the information they were receiving. So whilst there was the digital afforded more, more fake information, it also makes us suspicious and skeptical of information. It makes us question the information we're getting. And I think in pre-crisis Britain, it might not have seemed great at the time, but there was something positive about that, that there was a lot of distrust in the media and, uh, and, and in the different kinds of truths that were being told. Whereas now, I think you're seeing a, a return to a more, a more traditional and older pre-digital sense, actually, of people just trusting what they're told. And, and that's why we, we, have to, uh, we have to be here with radio stations like this to challenge those conceptions. Most citizens feel pretty hopeless, I think, and, and unable to, to fight back against these kind of huge mainstream corporations that simply entrench and support the, the ideals and ideologies of the state. It can, it can seem very hopeless indeed, but I think, you know, 
the fact that you're, you're out there listening, we're in here talking, shows that there is still space to combat these false truths and disinformation that's being sold to us. And, and that there's, it's never... Our prospect's friend is in an off-the-books holding cell somewhere on the premises. I'm betting those upstanding Albion goons are looking to avoid official scrutiny. Okay. Let's see what we can scrounge up. There he is. Get him out. Help me! Yes, yes, well done. I'll contact our prospect once you get her friend to safety. I don't see anyone following you. Good news. Your friend is safe from Albion. You can go ahead and make your findings public. Brilliant, thank you. I've got my suspicion this story will make more of a whimper than a bang, but my friend is safe. And that's what really counts, isn't it? DedSec could always use more people. Interested? Right. Count me in. Thank you. 
But there's never a spy scandal. All units. Possible suspect or suspect yeah. reported near your location. Receive. Engage if necessary. And I think that's I think that's a sad thing. I think I, I used to think of Germans as quite scary. But ah, I through the checkpoint, repeat suspect is through Germans the checkpoint. English accents. They speak in that very like precise way. It's very you know, they have ways of making you talk and now Germans all have that American accent. No sign of the target. Like, Over. Oh, welcome to the party. We're having a really nice time. They're much friendlier Germans. Let them stay. Well, that's all today. Thanks Terminating the search. As Control. Bad as it seems. Put out an APW. Honestly, uh, I hope. Until next time. <laughs> bye bye. Every year, more than 80,000 construction workers in England suffer from a work related injury. More than 25% of all work related fatalities happen in the building industry. Construction sites are dangerous places. With Ixatex drones, we're automating safety in the construction industry. Saving time, saving money, saving lives. Put your trust in Ixatex. Hello and welcome to today's episode of The Upload, Our Lives. Now, as you remember, Bloom announced a new version of the Optic at the recent Tone Conference, but we haven't heard too much about that since due to the dramatic events there. Let's perform one of that and consider the You look like the sort who might want to take back their city. You're a dead sick, aren't you? Maybe you can help me. Perhaps. What's the situation? My mate's disappeared. I've tried texting, calling, no response. It's been a week now. How dreadful. I'll be the first to admit, my mate was not at all popular. I'm sure there's a queue of people who'd love to get some payback. Don't worry. We'll find them. There's more than a few ways to vanish in London these days. How do we sort out what happened? Well, we could knock on every door in the city and see if they've got any abducted people on the premises. But it'd probably be smarter just to snoop around their last known location. Agreed. Forward me the coordinates. Walk straight onto the tube. It even acts as a passport. No longer do I have to dig around and try and find my old paper passport just to travel somewhere. Also, I thought that Optic's marketing strategy, making it free for people, was a stroke of genius. Genius. Bloom was really calculated when it was doing that. It was pushing this draconian device on us at all. Sure, everybody flocked to it. There was free Wi-Fi and phone plans. That definitely helped, but it wasn't a case of this is a product that you need in your life. Why do you hate it so much? It's just the worst because you had to give up your privacy expectations and accept surveillance. It was almost like the government and didn't even need to make it. Because we don't have any choice when it comes to the optic. Yes, it's convenient and mandatory, but everybody's forgotten what it really is. Yeah. No, I entirely understand. Hmm? Nothing is private anymore. There are so many times when I don't want anyone to have a clue about where I am, who I'm chatting with, what I'm doing. It's not even dodgy stuff, but I just don't want anybody to blackmail me with this in the future by hacking it. And because of Bloom's contracts, we as a state has become a complete surveillance paradise. I think you're painting a bit of a bleak picture. It's not all that bad. No, you're completely wrong on this. I don't want everybody tracking me wherever I'm going around London. Well, in that case, you might be interested in some rumours I heard. Did you hear that some dead set packets have found a way to bypass the optics connection with Bloom? Are they actually making it better or usable or actually friendly for anybody? Our missing person disappeared from here. It was probably captured on CCTV, like every other bloody thing in this city. Good. 
I'll get you that data. Located the CTOS hub. Uploading the CCTV footage to you now. Well, they were taken all right. Got in a shouting match with Albion and then took a couple of boots to the solar plexus. Damn. Yes, that's the bad news. The good news is I determined where they're being held. Sending you the coordinates. Being crushed by machinery at the stake again. Still, good effort, lots of positives to take away from today's ride. I'll come back stronger next time. My luck's gonna turn, I can feel it. It's our season, it's our season. You can't spell riot without right, and by right, I mean right wing. So, who do we turn to for health support and assistance in desperate times like these? Well, our artificially intelligent friend Bagley's rogue estranged brother. The one that tells it as it really is, not as it is pretending to be. Exclusive to this show, Bugly. <laughs> and remember, life was with Bugly. Here goes. Bugly. Hello, Andy. Bugly, tell me the path to true lasting happiness. Andy, to find true lasting happiness, find a disused quarry, scream into it for half an hour, and then lock yourself in a shed forever. Thanks, Bugly. You know the answer to everything. Hey, Bugly, how many seashells does she sell by the seashore? Alice, most of the seashore is now uninhabitable, so I would highly recommend you to take a doctor before you go. All right, I'm here. The abductee you're looking for should be somewhere nearby.
finished. Brilliant. He's in here. Let's get him out. Get him out of here. 